The 22nd of December, 1947, Krakow, Poland. The former staff of Auschwitz, the deadliest German Nazi concentration camp, hears their sentences read. After a month of gruesome testimonies, it is revealed that many SS officers were involved in the acts of inhumane torture and the mass murder of prisoners, often for pleasure, and that their cruelty went far beyond what their superiors ordered them to do. One of the perpetrators of this criminal Nazi regime is Paul Sturek. Paul Sturek was born on the 26th of June, 1908, in Königshutter, then part of the German Empire. In 1922, the eastern part of Silesia, including Königshutter, was separated from Germany and awarded to Poland. Sturek, after graduating from elementary school, became a steelworker by profession. The Second World War began on the 1st of September, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. Until this moment, Sturek, a Polish citizen of German nationality, felt Polish, but this changed with the outbreak of the war. To justify the action, Nazi propagandists accused Poland of persecuting ethnic Germans who were living in Poland. They also falsely claimed that Poland was planning, with its allies Great Britain and France, to encircle and dismember Germany. After the SS, in collusion with the German military, staged a phony attack on a German radio station, the Germans accused the Poles. Hitler then used the action to launch a retaliatory campaign against Poland. Nazi Germany possessed overwhelming military superiority over Poland. Germany launched the unprovoked attack at dawn on the 1st of September, with an advance force consisting of more than 2,000 tanks, supported by nearly 900 bombers and over 400 fighter planes. In all, Germany deployed 60 divisions and nearly 1.5 million men in the invasion. The assault on Poland demonstrated Germany's ability to combine air power and armor in a new kind of mobile warfare. The world adopted a new term to describe Germany's successful war tactic, Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War. Britain and France stood by their guarantee of Poland's border and declared war on Germany on the 3rd of September, 1939. However, Poland found itself fighting a two-front war when the Soviet Union invaded Poland from the east on the 17th of September, sealing Poland's fate. The Polish government fled the country that same day. The last operational Polish unit surrendered on the 6th of October. After Poland's defeat in early October 1939, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union divided the country in accordance with a secret protocol to the German-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact. This agreement became known as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and was signed one week before the start of World War II on the 23rd of August 1939 in Moscow by German Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop and Soviet Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov. The demarcation line was along the Bug River. The German occupation of Poland was exceptionally brutal. The Nazis considered Poles to be racially inferior and they launched a campaign of terror intended to destroy the Polish nation and culture and to reduce the Poles to a leaderless population of peasants and workers laboring for German masters. Ethnic cleansing was to be conducted systematically against the Polish people. In the first three months of war, from the fall of 1939 until the spring of 1940, some 60,000 former government officials, military officers in reserve, landowners, clergy, and members of the Polish intelligentsia, such as scientists, teachers, lawyers, and doctors, were executed region by region in the so-called intelligentsia action, including over 1,000 prisoners of war. In the spring of 1940, the German occupation authorities launched the AB Action, which was the second stage of the Nazi German campaign of violence during World War II, aimed to eliminate Poles considered to be members of the leadership class. The aim was to remove those Poles seen as most capable of organizing resistance to the German rule and to terrorize the Polish population into submission. The Germans shot thousands of teachers, priests, and other intellectuals in mass killings. In May 1940, around 60 kilometers west of Krakow, the Germans established Auschwitz concentration camp. The direct reason for the establishment of the camp was the fact that the mass arrest of Poles were increasing beyond the capacity of existing local prisons. The first 30 prisoners, the German criminals with green badges, arrived in Auschwitz on the 20th of May 1940 from the Sachsenhausen camp. These mandatory colorful badges of shame, primarily triangles, were used to identify why the inmates had been placed in a camp. Green badges were set for convicted criminals who were likely of a tough temperament suitable for capo duty. The capos were prisoners in Nazi camps who were selected by the SS to supervise the other camp's inmates in exchange for better food, 
clothing and housing, and they were often as brutal as their SS supervisors. The Greens, as these 30 German prisoners were called, did much to establish the sadism of early camp life, which was directed particularly at Polish inmates. The first transport of Polish male prisoners, including Catholic priests and Jews, arrived in Auschwitz on the 14th of June, 1940, from Tarnów in Poland. They were given serial numbers, 31 to 758. In the beginning, as with most German concentration camps, Auschwitz served three purposes. To incarcerate real and perceived enemies of the Nazi regime, to provide a supply of forced laborers for deployment in SS-owned construction-related enterprises, and to kill small targeted groups of the population. It was only in 1942, when Auschwitz also became the largest of the extermination centers, where the final solution to the Jewish question, which referred to the Nazi plan to murder European Jews, was carried out. During the Holocaust, Auschwitz was the only location where concentration camp prisoners received tattoos. Incoming prisoners were assigned a camp serial number, which was sewn into their uniforms. However, only those prisoners selected for work were issued with serial numbers. Those prisoners sent directly to the gas chambers were not registered and received no tattoos. Paul Sturek arrived in Auschwitz in October 1940. He held various positions within the camp and worked not only at the censorship office for letters and parcels for prisoners, but also as a guard and block leader. At Auschwitz, Sturek turned into a sadist who beat and tormented prisoners regardless of their gender and age. On one occasion, when counting pairs of female prisoners leaving for work, Sturek beat them with a stick or with his hands about the head, or blindly all over the body, paying no heed to the effects of his blows. He would do it either for no reason at all, or because some prisoner fell out of step or failed to keep pace. Paul Sturek was also a sexual deviant. He was infamous for beating the female inmates with a stick on the buttocks and breasts, and when prisoners went stark naked to the bathhouse for de-lousing, Paul Sturek would prod them with a stick in their genitals. He used to beat and kick prisoners sometimes for no reason whatsoever, or for instance for failing to take off their hats upon seeing him. Beating prisoners with his hands, or any other object that he chanced upon, he never paid any heed to whether his blows landed on the head, neck, chest, or any other body part. Sturek was notorious for beating prisoners from behind with a stick on the nape of the neck. Another Sturek specialty was whipping with a stick either on the buttocks or about the kidneys. On one occasion, when a prisoner was in one of the blocks in the women's camp and talked to some women, Sturek noticed it, approached the prisoner, and shouting in German, demanded an explanation of why the prisoner was talking to that female inmate. When the prisoner responded that he did not understand what he was saying, Sturek beat him forcefully with his hand in the face and stomach, kicked the prisoner, and then told him in Polish, Now you can speak Polish, you son of a bitch. As the block leader at blocks 10 and 22, Paul Sturek enjoyed organizing roll calls. During roll calls, the prisoners were lined up in rows of 10 and then counted, which sometimes took hours and could be especially tormenting for the prisoners, particularly in the bad weather. Some SS guards organized roll calls which lasted from 5 a.m. to late in the evening hours. Due to freezing weather and exhaustion, many prisoners collapsed and were then taken to the gas chambers. Sturek also took part in selections on the rail ramp. The process of selection and murder was carefully planned and organized. When a train stopped at the platform, the arrivals were lined up into two columns, men and boys in one, women and girls in the other. The SS physicians, such as Josef Mengele, performed a selection. The only criterion was the appearance of the prisoners, whose fate, for labor or for death, was determined at will. Sturek, when supervising with the other SS men, the loading of prisoners who were to be transported in cars to the gas chambers, behaved inhumanely and tortured the inmates in a cruel way, beating the women, the men, and the children with a stick or cane, while forcing them into the cars. The SS men kept the people fated to die unaware of what awaited them. They were told that they were being sent to the camp where work was waiting for them, but first, they had to undergo disinfection and bathe. They were then told politely to hang their clothes on hooks, take a shower, and were even promised that they would be provided with soup and tea or coffee. However, they were taken into the gas chambers, locked in, and killed with Zyklon B gas. After the victims were murdered, their gold teeth were extracted, and the woman's hair was shorn by the Zonder Commando, which were groups of Jews forced to work in the crematorium. The bodies were hauled to the crematorium furnaces for incineration. The bones were pulverized, and the ashes were scattered in the fields. 
Sturek also took active part in executions, carried out both by shooting at the death wall of the infamous Block 11 and by hanging. Between 1942 and 1944, more than 40 Auschwitz subcamps exploiting prisoners as slave labor were founded, mainly at various sorts of German industrial plants and farms. In one of them, Monowitz Buna, Paul Sturek was also deployed. Monowitz Buna held around 12,000 prisoners, the great majority of whom were Jews, in addition to non Jewish criminals and political prisoners. The SS charged IG Farben, which built its factories here to produce synthetic rubber. Three rice marks per day for unskilled workers, four per hour for skilled workers, and one and a half for children. Paul Sturek remained in the camp until December 1944 or January 1945, when Soviet forces approached the Auschwitz concentration camp complex and the SS began evacuating Auschwitz and its subcamps. These forced marches of concentration camp prisoners became known as death marches. The prisoners had to march over long distances under guard and in extremely harsh conditions. At the end of the war, Sturek was tried at the Auschwitz trial, which began on the 24th of November 1947 and lasted one month. Numerous witnesses provided their testimonies. One witness, named Sosnovsky, testified how in November 1942, while he was walking to fetch some pipes from the warehouse, he met Sturek along the way with his dog. Without any reason, Sturek set the animal on him, which bit the man's thigh, causing him to bleed. Sosnovsky also testified how in February 1943, during roll call one of the sick inmates could not stand and therefore sat down. Sturek proceeded to beat him until he was unconscious. The man was transferred to the sick bay only after the roll call had ended. Sturek declared that everything the witness had testified was untrue. However, his lies did not help him escape justice. On the 22nd of December 1947, the Polish Supreme National Tribunal in Krakow sentenced Sturek to death by hanging. He was 39 years old when he was executed on the 24th of January 1948. There were no tears shed for Paul Sturek. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you and we'll see you next time on the channel.